This is Skidor 32-650 down to Sierra. It's a class 44. They're also called the Peaks. It's old lettering numbers, D3 is what it comes with. It's a digital locomotive. Uh, has sound, driver, warning lights, driving lights. Now the strange anomaly with this Batman model is it does not come as standard with cab lights. Anyway, I've had them put in and they're okay, maybe a little bit bright. If I bothered to go through the settings and adjust the CV settings, I could dim them. But to me, it's not worth the hassle. These in real life had a top speed of 75 miles per hour, 2,300 horsepower. This one was withdrawn in July 76 and it was scrapped in 1976. Now, people talk about these being difficult to run on model railways. Well, the simple answer is they're not. Your track has to be level on the horizontal and on the parallel. And it has to be laid like a railway and not a train set for these to run correctly. And the reason being is they've got eight wheeled chassis at each end or eight wheeled bogies. So they're quite large, so everything has to be laid correctly. Otherwise, they will derail. There is nothing wrong with these locos whatsoever. Your track just has to be laid correctly, as I've just said. We're going to run it in analog and in digital, mainly in digital because it's a digital locomotive, but we're going to demonstrate that it will in fact run in analog. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to start it in analog. Now, as I've said with these locos, you can't run the cab lights in analog. You get the sound and it'll start moving, and there you go, and that's in analog. And you can, well, you can't see because it's coming so slow towards you, so I'll speed it up a little bit. And as I say, this is in analogue. Now what we're going to do is demonstrate the analogue control here by slowing it right down. Right, right down as it comes past me now. So anybody that says you can't run these in analogue, well, judge by your video. And that's nice, so slow speed running in analogue. Okay, now when you stop it in analogue, totally, it restarts again. You can't leave it ticking over like in digital. I'm going to do the sidings test in analog. Now obviously to control it you have to move the control. You've got to be sensitive with the controls. It's not like putting in a number. It is more of a challenge driving this in analog. But we're demonstrating here on Pico Insel Frog points that you can also run digital locos on Insel Frog points. And you can see we're deliberately playing with the speeds to show you the kind of control you have in analog. And you can see it's pretty good. Now, if we'd have stopped it totally, the engine would have turned off and we'd have had to have done a restart. So basically we just flick the switch across.
and you can see this is pretty good. And as I've said, you do not get cab lights running a Batman Loco in analogue. You've also no controls over the sound. So this is the Loco is doing what it's choosing to do. If we can bring it forward, please. And also when you change direction, you could hear then that the sound stopped. Whereas if you do it in digital, well you will see, we'll demonstrate it in a second. Okay, we're going to do the uh, the sidings test, the curve points test in analog. And again, this is showing you the, the analog control. Now this is really tight. You can probably see the bogies are right out. This is a radius two curve going through. Radius two curve. And you can see it, it, it's easy, but your track for these locos has to be level on the parallel and on the horizontal, i.e. horizontal where the tracks meet. And you can see it, it's fantastic. Now you saw then where you, you could hear then when we changed it the sound stops. When you're running it on analog, the sound does stop when you change the power over. But you can see it, well, it runs really, really nicely. Okay, what we're going to demonstrate here is a throttle control in analogue. So we've got it coming around slowly. Should just come into view now. And can you just speed it up a tad? Now slow it down. Right down. And you can see you've got good control over it, the loco, and speed it up. But you've no control over what sounds you get and away you go. Here we skid all, looking up to some Pullman cars.
And this is pulling 12 Pullman cars. And here comes Skiddle pulling 12 Hornby Pullman cars.
Okay, we're going to do the sidings test now in digital. We've seen it in analog. And there's a Pico insole frog points. Now you hear people saying that these class 44s come off the track, which is rubbish it's their track if your track is correct you've seen this with no driving lights on I think it's, that's it And you can see it's superb. And here we are doing the curve points siding test. All open radius two. And these locos are not prone to coming off the track if your track is laid correctly. You will see in this that those big eight wheel bogies are at the limit of their travel. People have problems with these, it's because their track's not flat and perpendicular on the horizontal plane and on the parallel plane. Okay, would you like to stop the loco? And would you like to turn the lights off in this area here? Now to leave them on at the back. And here a night shot. And you can see it is perfect.
This to me looks absolutely superb. Here comes Skid Orr pulling a heavy freight train. And here comes Skidor. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this locomotive run and exactly what it can do. But you can see it trundles round pulling all these carriages with consummate ease. Obviously a lot more realistic than the five I would normally pull, but it shows the power of this locomotive. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed seeing it run. Thank you.